68 degrees outside the window on 8th Street, 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and you'll soon have audio and video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Tim and Brant are in the studio this morning. Morning, oh, yeah. guys. Morning. Morning. Hey, nice to have you here. And, of course, Fulton County Community Foundation with Brian Johnson. Brian, yeah. good morning. Good morning, Tom. It's lovely walk down it this morning. Nice. Sun shining. Light breeze out there, nice hey, temperature. Can't beat it, can you? Can't it's been a beat nice it. Spring. It's really it is. Been a very pretty spring. It is. Yes. It continues on that way. Yes, we'll take this every day of the oh, year, right? Oh, we though. So, well, hey, we got a lot of things going on at the foundation right We're now. Always busy. Um, a couple of things, um, reminders: um, the Kiwana Union Township Community Endowment Fund. Um, is one that um, was started a few years ago and makes grants specifically in the Union Township area. Um, we're accepting applications for that, for grants in that area, up to $2,500. Um, some years that's been one project, some years it's been split up between multiple projects. Um, but the grant application deadline for that is May 5th. Um, so folks still have some time to get that application completed um, and back to us um, about a week and a half. Right. Um, we'd love to see some projects. The, the goal is to support projects specifically in the Union Township area. We have folks that live and work in that area that are part of that committee that make those decisions um, and can support some really neat things in that area. So. Um, again, May 5th is the deadline for that. That application is available on, on our website, nicf.org. Um, if folks have questions about that, whether their organization is eligible for that or just ideas for a project, um, we'd love to talk to them if they have sure. questions about that. So. Absolutely. Another thing, um, the deadline for the grant applications for the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle has already passed, but I wanted to take this opportunity to invite any women who are available. Tom, we're not, we're not invited. We're not, not, members, we're not we? women, so we can't um, be part of this group, but they will have their annual social May 9th. Um, and what happens is um, this is the time when they invite the um, organizations that have exactly. applied for grants to come in, give a little bit of a talk about the project, about their organization, and then all of the members that are there um, will then vote on which projects they want to support. Um, all of the finalists will receive some support, but um, the votes will determine what level of funding each of them okay. receive. So um, really neat. Um, this is if you if women are listening and they're not a member and they'd like to come and see what the group is about, we'd love to have you join us. Um, our request is that you RSVP by May 3rd to the foundation. Um, you can give me a call, 224-3223. Um, or email me at fulton at nicf.org um, and get your reservation in. Um, if that's something that you're interested in finding out more about this group and would just like to see what goes on at these events, um, we'd love to have you. Um, I, I think I can mention that um, the recently retired Mike Kinney will be our entertainment <laughs> for the evening. He'll be performing some some of his music okay, um, at the event as well. So um, come see, here are some good projects that are going on. Um, here are some good entertainment. Um, members also, please RSVP to me my May 3rd so we can make all of our plans, um, get everything in line for that. But um, it's always a wonderful evening. Again, that's May 9th at 7 p.m. at the Akron Community Center. Okay. Um, we'd love to have women that are interested in joining us be a part of that. Um, it's almost time for scholarships. In the near future, we'll be announcing, we'll be attending through the month of May um, scholarship um, presentations, um, given early congratulations to the class of 2017. It's always a fun time of the year um, that we look forward to that. So. Today what I wanted to do, it's been a while since we've talked a little bit about the history of the Community Foundation. So I kind of wanted to run through some of the some of the highlights and some of the things that have gone on with the Foundation. And a rich history it is. A rich right? history it is. Um, it's really amazing when we look back at the past almost 25 years, 2018 will be 25 years, kind of hard to believe that that's um, been around, but um, from where this organization has come. Um, kind of a little bit of history about community foundations. Um, Indiana has 94 community foundations. Um, one, at least one that serves every single county. A couple of counties have two um, for various reasons. But um, 
a lot of these started as a result of Lilly Endowment's involvement um, with this. Um, one thing that we often get is the question, well, you're part of Lilly Endowment. No, um, the Northern Indiana Community Foundation is not part of Lilly Endowment. We have received support from Lilly in the past, um, but we are our own standalone sure. organization. So what happened was um, Lilly Endowment is one of the largest private foundations in the United States. Um, and they wanted to be able to help communities start their own individual community foundations made up of local individuals that made decisions on local projects. Um, they're sitting in Indianapolis and hearing all these requests from around the state and say, you know what, all of these sound like good projects. But us sitting in Indianapolis don't know what the most important thing for Rochester and Akron and Kiwana and Fulton and Lighters Ford are at this moment. So what we'd like to do is have a local organization be the ones that can make the decisions on that. And then also the step beyond that is these local organizations have options, the ability to um, raise funds locally and also grant funds from their own funds locally. And so Lilly offered a um, program that was designed to be 15 years to get community foundations to the point where they're self-sustainable, they could operate as their own organization and would be made up of local people. So in 1993, um, Fulton County, along with at that point Miami County and Cass County, um, formed a three-county association um, to start what is now the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, along the way, um, 2000, or 1996, um, Cass County and Stark County also joined. Um, in the 2002-2001 time frame, um, Cass County split off okay. and Pulaski County also split off, formed their own single county foundations. And so today the Northern Indiana Community Foundation is made up of Miami, Stark, and Fulton counties. Um, it really gives us a good opportunity to be able to have some um, good efficiencies as far as um, being able to do things on a larger scale, but then also be able to provide some local um, local services that, that wouldn't be available if we only had a one county organization. Exactly. So, 93 was when Fulton County got the start along with the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, looking at some of the highlights, um, the first grants were given from Fulton County funds in 1996. Okay. Um, we're able to support some projects and then um, some of the projects that people are probably more familiar with um, part of Lilly Endowment's matching program was that if you raise some local dollars, we will give you some dollars to be able to grant out. Um, so in 2000, or 1998 and 1999, um, Lilly Endowment each year gave the foundation um, $400,000 each year to be able to grant out to local projects. Um, some things like the Blackadder Sports Complex, um, the Round Barn being moved, um, Community Center and, and Lighters Ford. Um, some of those projects that we see um, came through those grants, okay. but the stipulation was that the local foundation had to raise um, some matching dollars for that. Um, it's exciting that to see that Fulton County was successful in being able to do that. They also, part of those grants, um, gave us some funds to use to create endowments. Um, so a portion of what we grant out every year from our um, community fund endowments were from these grants that Lilly had given early on. So they're not supporting us with new dollars, but those dollars that were originally given that helped get the foundation off the ground are still being used um, today to make grants in our community. So wonderful to see how that works. Um, another highlight, 1998 was the first Lilly scholarship given. Wow. Um, since then, um, we've been able to give over 35 scholarships in Fulton County. Um, and it's exciting to see how that program works, Lily. One, Lily, one of their goals is education. Um, one of the focuses that their foundation focuses on is raising the attainment of education in our communities, and the Lily Community Scholarship is one that they've been able to um, do that with over two and a half million dollars in scholarships given to local students um, through that Lily program and Just been over almost 20 years now yes and it's it's been wildly successful for them 
So before we go too much further, I kind of wanted to define um, what an endowment is. Okay. We use Good that idea. term a lot, and some people probably realize what that is, but um, if you don't know, what happens with an endowment is a gift is given to the foundation. We then take that gift and invest that, and then the earnings are used to distribute to community needs, whether it be scholarships, grants to local organizations. Um, but the neat part about that is that original gift stays there and continues earning. Um, so what we see is gifts are made to the foundation, that gift grows, some of the, that growth is paid out, and then that fund also grows a little bit also the idea to keep up with inflation, be able to maintain that earning power. But the neat part about that is those gifts that were given 20 plus years ago are still in our community, working for our community, and will be in the future. And if you start, stop and think about that, um, what happens is at some point, say somebody gives a gift of $10,000 over the period of, of some years, that gift will produce earnings that are paid out, but that $10,000 still stays there. And at some point, that gift will have actually given out more than the initial gift. Right. And it's really neat to see that process work. And um, it's neat to see the fact that we have funds that we know we're going to be able to give out. It's not a matter of having to raise funds. It's, it's funds that we know we're going to be able to give out to support community needs because we're always going to need um, something more in our community. And um, so these funds do that. So, um, just some of the things okay. that we do with the foundation. Yeah, what about them? Um, most people, if they have know about the foundation but haven't been involved in anything, know that we do scholarships. That's a big part of what we do. Um, not only the Lilly Scholarship, but we have 50-plus um, scholarship funds that um, if you're going into a career field, you're a graduate of a high school, you're looking at, um, of course, agriculture is a big um, field in our area. Sure. Nursing is always a popular one. Um, things like education, different areas of business. Um, there's probably something that applies. And a lot of these scholarships are created in memory or in honor of someone. Um, so those criteria often honor things that, um, that have been something that's big in our community. Okay. Um, the George and Lyle Schwank Memorial Scholarship is one. Um, he was very involved in agriculture. His family continues to be involved in agriculture. So that is a scholarship that supports somebody that's going into um, some field of agriculture. And it's wonderful to see how that um, kind of carries on their legacy in our community. Um, so scholarships are one thing that people realize, yeah, the foundation does scholarships. That's usually the first thing that people realize about this. But that's only about a third of what we do. Um, another big thing that we do is we have funds that support specific organizations. A couple programs ago, we talked about some designated and agency funds exactly. where donors have set those up. Um, maybe it be a specific organization they've been involved with, a church, um, a community group. Um, that provides a steady stream back to those organizations. It's wonderful to see that. Um, happened with an endowment fund, that organization can say, you know what, every year we will get a distribution for this. Um, the Historical Society is, a, is an example of a organization that does um, so many things. Of course, this weekend they have their, their Red Bud coming up, exactly um, a right. wonderful event, right. but um, provides some, some very good history and good entertainment on our community. Um, they have two funds that support them, so every year we get to take them a check that provides um, for some of the things that they're able to provide through the Historical Society. So that's another area that we support. Um, something that's neat to me is we have a type of fund that's called the Donor Advised Fund, where a donor establishes a fund and then they um, get to make every year recommendations about where those funds go. So if we have projects that come up, um, we work with the folks that are doing the project to connect them sometimes with a donor that may have an interest in that area. Um, it's a really, it's a flexible type of giving where a donor doesn't have to commit to one specific thing or organization. Um, and they can every year make a recommendation okay. out of that. It's, it's a really, to me, those are the most fun because you get to be able to connect a project with a donor that 
are both doing a good thing. Pick and choose, another Pick and choose, pick sure. and choose. Or a lot of times donors have specific projects that they know about that they like to support. So um, wonderful to see that. Um, something else that we do that's that's not always endowment related is um, sometimes when newer organizations are getting started um, we're able to fill the gap in between when the idea happens and to when they become their own organization um, so some recent examples like the compassionate health center and um, the fulton county animal center when they were working on um, being established as their own organization, we are able to fill the gap and kind of um, provide a little bit of um, support as a parent organization for that as far as fundraising and, and things like that. So um, that's not a big thing that we do, and our focus really is on building endowments, but sometimes there are cases where um, those types of projects come up and we can fill in a gap and, and help make good things go. And those two organizations have grown and are just doing a wonderful job in our community serving um, serving those in need and animals. Um, it's been wonderful to see how they have grown. And then another big thing that we do is community grants. Um, this year we'll have um, around $200,000 to be able to give out to different projects in That's the right. area, um, different grants. We've already started granting. This is the second year that we've gone to a no grant deadline. In the past we would say, well, if you get your grant application into us by October 1st, we'll let you know by the end of November whether you get a grant or not. Some projects didn't work on that timeline, and so this is the second year we've been able to support projects as needs come in. Um, those grant applications are actually available on our website right now. If somebody has an idea for a project, um, then they would complete that application, get it to us, and we would get them a response. Okay. Um, usually we try and meet quarterly on that, but if there is a pressing need where somebody says, you know what, I need to know in a month if I'm going to be able to get this, um, then we can often get them an answer quicker than that. And part of the reason why we're able to do that is because we have so many funds um, that support those community grants. Um, so it's been wonderful to see that project happening. Exactly. Kind of an example of a recent um, grant, um, the Fulton County Council on Aging. Um, they can apply for grants for um, their vehicles. If you've seen the Transpo vehicles around town, if you haven't been downtown during the day, you haven't, it, chances are you've seen multiple of them throughout the day. Um, we are able to grant, they have to provide some local matching funds every year for purchasing new vehicles and um, we we're able to grant to that um, just as an example and their timeline is they often have to know towards the start of the year um, so our committee was able to be able to support them this year um, through that on their timeline not okay. making them fit in our timeline right. so it's been wonderful to see that and again that's about a third of what we do in our community um, so really some some wide-ranging things if people have an idea for a project um, whether it be grant or if you say, you know what, we need an endowment fund for this, we're always willing to sit down and talk about how if the community foundation can help make something like that happen. So um, just some quick stats. Um, 2016, um, we we're able to give out um, over $120,000 in scholarships Great. to area students, and that's um, the cost of college is a major concern. Scholarships make this cost a little bit more affordable. Um, another pretty interesting stat, $184,000 in community grants. Um, that supports just a number of projects throughout the community that um, it's neat that we don't have to fight with other, other counties to be able to receive those funds. We know that those monies will be given out to Fulton County projects and it's wonderful to have that income stream. Another big number we always like to look at, um, since 93 when the foundation started, over $11.6 million distributed. Now that includes everything that we talked about. That includes our grants, that includes scholarships, um, support for agencies and organizations. Um, but when you think about that, $11.6 million, that's a pretty good number to be able to, to say, we've been able to give this in our community right. and, and help these projects happen. So. Um, the one thing that people often don't understand is where our funding comes from. Right. It's from donors. Sure. Um, without donors, 
none of this would have been possible, not even the early Lilly right. grants, because they always said you need to be able to provide some matching funds for this. And um, so I, in wrapping up, I'd like to say thank you to the donors that have made this possible, whether it be a big gift, a small gift, um, anything that has helped us get to this point. And the wonderful thing is those gifts are still here. Those gifts are still working. Um, in another 10 years when we're doing this radio program, Tom <laughs> will be talking about how much more has been exactly. able to been given out. And it's, it's all because those donors have supported that. So thank you to everybody who's made this um, community organization possible. Um, and it's exciting to see how we can help support the community. So, And, of course, Fulton County uh, in particular has always been a very giving county. It has. And folks has. really respond to that. So, yes. as you say, thank you for all that. Yes, it, it's just wonderful. To see. It's, a, it's a great community to live in, and, and we appreciate the fact that when there's a need, people step up and say, you know what, I can help fill this need, and that's been proven again sure. and again. So, wonderful okay. to see that. So. Just a couple quick reminders. Um, the Kiwana Union Township um, Community Endowment Grant application is due May 5th um, for projects in the Kiwana Union Township area. The Fulton County Women's Giving Circle Social is May 9th at 7 p.m. at the Akron Community Center. Please RSVP to me by May 3rd on that. Um, and if you're interested in anything we talked about or have an idea for a project that you think the Community Foundation may be able to help with, um, we're always interested to hear about those. You can find us online, nicf.org, um, on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We'd love to hear any ideas you have for um, helping improve the quality of life in Fulton County. Brian Johnson, as always, thanks very much for the information, and uh, thanks for all the good work you do. $11.6 million, that's impressive. It's pretty neat to be a part of. I bet it is. Brian, thanks. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom.